welcome back if you're just joining us you're still on to tech weekly on captain television and right now we've been joined by a guest to speak on building the ecosystem in nigeria from the bottom up uh today we've been joined by shola sleek akin uh he has quite a profile so i'm going to read that out now he's a software engineer and tech community manager with over six years of experience he is the founder of code novation uh, he has trained, uh, or which focuses on uh, the, uh, the girl, child, and children, other children. He has trained over 5,000 teenagers and youths in digital skills and opportunities, and is presently building developers' communities uh, with Google and others. Welcome to the program. Thank you. All right. Yeah, that's, me. that's quite a profile there. <laughs> Great. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. All right. Um, uh, let's start with uh, your experience. Uh, like uh, like I just read out, you you seem to be focused on teaching or starting from an early age for young ones. Uh, so far in your <coughs> your longer experience so far, what has been your major takeaway from the experience? Yeah, it's, I have to say it has been an amazing journey so far. Mm -hmm. uh, it's something I'm very more passionate about. So uh, my major takeaway has been the impact so far. You know. Uh, something you're passionate about and you see people giving remarkable feedbacks mm. you know a feedbacks you could connect to and emotional feedbacks mm. people telling you how amazing you've been in the journey in the tech career you know people starting from scratch and getting better becoming good software developer handling well as well too you know mm. building their career people that had nothing or that don't have a, a career path to direct themselves and they're mm. able to get quick mentorship resources and mm. uh, a lot of impact so it has been a major uh, take away for me like the impact alone mm. just awesome for me now uh, still on your profile before we move ahead uh it's mentioned that uh, you're a software engineer sure. and you also train how does that work uh, how are you able to you know you know most times people say if you can't do you teach yeah. but you're doing and you're teaching how do you how does that work how do you, how do you manage to I'll yeah, be able to that, do that. That's quite a cool question because I always get this question even sometimes when I had uh, more interview with other people and they would like say, oh, I think you actually a software engineer, you work with a company like a software engineer and a senior developer advocate. And at the same time, you could be able to manage different tech community, developers communities, ranging from the GDG community, the Google developers community, the JetBrains community, Conovation, mm. and even right now, a journalization community recently. So mm. it's really been a big surprise for most people and uh, i have to say that is you ab having the ability to manage your time mm. knowing your schedules you're passionate about it you have to make sacrifices there will be less fun definitely mm. and you may be probably going to sleep less so mm -hmm. yeah definitely just the passion managing your time having mm. your schedules working with calendars and you know the passion has to be there if mm. the passion is not there on long run you might get tired so when you have the passion on how you do how your schedules very well, trust me, mm. it's good to, you're going to manage your time very well and it's going to be very awesome for you mm. in the journey. All right, um, before we go into some of the major questions we have today, I'll just um, continue on that uh, part of passion. When you're teaching children, uh, do you find that that's something that is they need to grasp it? Or can you have a child or a young one who is not even interested in tech, doesn't really care, but you teach them and they become proficient in it or is it that uh, most of the young people you teach they come you know wide-eyed wanting i want to know more i love this or uh, ha have you experienced both or how, yeah, how do you I, I have experienced both mm. um it's on both ways but i have to tell you one is easier than or mm. the other the easier part is when the child has a passion have a drill or have a uh, an interest the key interest in learning tech you know some of them i tend to develop tech about what they watch on tv or what they see people or some of them doing games you know so or some of them still pressing computers so mm. it's actually different on what they have but in that aspect if they have is more easier for us because they're going to grab things more easier they're going to be consistent in their learning phases mm. and it's going to be more easier part but on a situation where you would have them not being able to have a interest in tech like that and mm. you need to get them on track so you have to find a way to capture them and one of the way to capture them is by using maybe scratch programming language which is actually to have interesting games uh, mm. programming a uh, learning platform structures for kids basically so it has to be something more interesting you know create some instructional videos that uh, we actually attract those 
techies and when they start seeing something exciting like children they mm. tend to feel like oh this is a great thing so I, I think i'll grow more interest for me and from there you could actually capture them and they'll have more interest in it mm. so both works but uh more the one that is more easier is when they have key interest about it and it's easier for you to actually bring them in and train them by that yeah you actually answered my next question i was going to ask how you uh, get kids into uh get them interested in the first place yeah. uh, but i'm also interested in something else this these children have parents right so yeah. how i uh, i'm wondering how you know uh, the tech sector at the moment seems not to be f a fully permeated nigeria it seems to still be a select number of people who have caught on the train and are now moving ahead but we still have most people who want i want my child to be a doctor i want my child to be a lawyer i want my child to be you know those regular so these parents where are you finding them or how are they uh, learning of these opportunities where they can help their kids get a career in tech and not just the regular go to school get a degree and you know normal regular nine to five or something yeah that's good um one of the reasons why i have to say is that um technology recently you know we're in information age mm. and uh, internet is so right now that we have more opportunities to actually for parents to see what's going online or have someone they could reach out to uh recently uh, a parent reached out to me on via linkedin seeing what you're doing oh, like i love what you're doing it's been great stuff mm. uh, i like my children to be part of it but i i know you don't have uh the location in Lagos, so mm. oh, we love what you're doing, and we want to have more interest on this. And it's okay, I could give you best possible advice. This is what you do, mm. and this is what you can do. You know, now parents are coming to realization that uh, tech is very important; it's the future. Mm. And mm. Um, when you are a uh, software developer or you are any, you find yourself in any of the IT field, it's very difficult for you not to excel. Like you have to just get something, do a job. You know, technology is every part of the field aspect in the world right now. So. Mm tech is really needed so they have their realization now that they if they have their children at a tender age get them into tech it will help them in their career path it could even open your brain a uh, programming itself naturally it improves iq mm. when you start actually thinking about how the algorithms works you have a better iq it happens to me when even when i was started programming in in that's uh, my second year level level two mm. uh i got to three four hundred levels so that my estimation rate is quite different mm. now i could both crime and understand so mm. it's actually amazing for mm. you know just like how people get people into chess game yeah you know you get so it's really good for the iq it makes children more smarter so if you can learn like people like max Zuckerberg, jack of twitter and all that that tend to learn at the tenja head even big game you could see how smart they become in the long run so mm. it's really good it's something parents are now coming to realization apart from seeing what people are doing so they get to reach out to me via maybe someone reaching out what i'm doing and they could have oh, so he's doing something they have a platform doing something we have to train them sometimes we do publicity general publicity and people mm. come around and all mm. that but some children some parents they have to bring their child mm. to monitor how the old person is true. going so it's just a good job all right now uh, about your particular uh, field and uh, software engineering what are some misconceptions that uh, might make people not want to get into it like if, for instance you mentioned that programming helps uh, you know with your iq and all that uh, but some persons also look at it as something that is very complex and very, you know, something they can't even begin to fathom. Uh, what are other things that discourage people from even starting uh, specifically that part of tech? Okay, uh, well, uh, majorly, uh, I would say that that part of tech is one of the most tedious mm. part of tech, you know, mm. one of them, basically, because... Mm. Um, Programming, I have to tell you, it's not really easy at some point mm. when you get to the advanced stage, writing different algorithms and all that. And, and that's why we see that sometimes it's more difficult for people to get into tech, especially when uh, one of the issues we're having is um, uh, the society has pasted like um, tech is basically for the more of the male aspect than the female mm. aspect. And yeah. this is something we're trying to bridge. It's that smart amazing women doing mm. awesome stuff in tech you know having major roles in tech and that's what we're encouraging because it shouldn't be a difficulty we're trying to create more balance in you know, gender balance in tech being more women and it's something that i've been part of over the years too mm. you know encourage more females to learn tech and let them know okay yeah this is a bit difficult yes but it can be achieved there's nothing that it's that easy you know mm. every aspect has their own part yeah. so so as the tech 
part two, I mean the programming part two. So if you get it done, you focus, you have your goal, you're passionate about it, trust me, you're gonna get this done. And the other aspect is uh, something I could say is basically maybe uh, people having this kind of phobia about what's going on around Nigeria right now, people mm. going to tech and uh, as tech is, we could say you're working remotely and you don't have ID, being mm. harassed by a yeah. police or something, you get, that's another difficulty we're facing right now. Let mm. people know that we are techies, we are developers and um, we deserve better basically. Yeah. All right now, uh, so what do you say? You mentioned um, possible harassment being an issue. But what do you think about persons who believe or who see tech as uh, a, a, a money making a quick money making scheme uh, some time ago I think about a month or two ago there was actually an argument on uh, social media about how some persons were comparing tech to internet fraud and saying you know we have fraudsters who go to Malaysia and then they sponsor 10 of their upcoming fraudsters why are tech bros not you know it, one tech bro goes to you know wherever let's say uh, some of these are uh, a big place maybe he gets a, a work um, a job at google or something mm -hmm. and he just goes alone you know so there was this um persons were arguing against it that don't look at tech like that it's not yahoo it's not internet fraud it's so what do you say to that when people think that it's something that let's just get in because there's a lot of money in it and it will be quick yeah so mm -hmm. uh, i i think that's a very very important thing but one thing i always say pe tell people is that it's not as easy as they always think and once you start having a money motivation for everything it's also a problem at the beginning because um tell me when the money doesn't come quick as you think then there's a problem there's a huge problem you might actually yeah. drop out so quickly so the first perception is don't have this kind of mindset that you're just going to make quick money when you're going to tech yes there's money in tech but it's been worked for it's you have to exactly. hand it yeah. it's not magic it's a lot of talent and hard mm. work mm putting together to the work. So you shouldn't have this mindset like, oh, you have to make quick money. And when you get there and you see difficulties, you're not getting to that peak as you wanted, mm. you get discouraged and feel like, oh, come on, they said there's money in there. What's yeah. going on? Yeah. So it shouldn't be a money motivation thing. So, but, uh, but sincerely there is because Africans, especially in Africans, we have talent. And that's why you see people, a lot of people hiring developers across because we are still like, we have real talents that need to be really mastermind and utilized and that's awesome awesomeness in us too mm. so you can see nigerians being one of the tech uh, best tech ecosystem across you know contributing even in gtop and all that so mm. it's actually very amazing so i think it's something people should just believe that yes this is my project what i want to go yes i can make money from it mm. but i should not have a perception of money motivation mm. that's that's interesting all right now uh taking it back to another argument of online I think it was just a couple of days or weeks ago. It was about, um, I don't know if you know him, I'm Lean Adeboji, or I think that's his yeah, name. Adeboji, uh, yeah. yeah, he was uh, one of the facilitators of Flutter Wave and really Dela. So he, he yeah. So he was um, advocating that more Nigerian startups need the CEOs and whatnot to be here in Nigeria. And you know patriotism that is better to build from here because what we have is we have some nigerian tech ceos who are not in the country they they are abroad and they run their things from there but they have like a, a front man in in the country who does the the groundwork for them and you know the, the argument was back and forth some persons were saying you know you have to you know think about your your life your because some persons actually left after are uh, being targeted for some reason. There were some persons who were related to the NSAS uh, matter and they had to basically run away mm -hmm. to uh, continue their business over there. Mm -hmm. So it was going back and forth and I, I want to know where, where do you stand on this argument? Do you think that being the fact that it is tech where things are not the way they used to be, it is tech. You can be in China, wherever, exactly. and it's almost like you're here. Mm -hmm. Does it really, do you really think that patriotism aspect is necessary to build it in nigeria even though you're out somewhere yeah, else. um for me in my own personal opinion i i believe both works mm. first um uh, let me start from the idea of you being patriotic mm. yes your home is your home mm. and you have to understand that fact that your home is your home you have to be committed to your home improving your home but at the same time we have to understand the technology aspect that 
remote is the future of work, mm. just like they say now. So um, there should be a balance, basically. I don't have issues with, as a CEO, having a base office maybe outside the country. But at the same time, remember, it's your home. You should mm. learn to balance both of them together. Come in to, you know, mm. have team bonding with your organizations, you know, with your team members. Yeah. Come in time to time, you know, spend some time in, your, in the country, you know, and create a team bonding for your organization at the same time you know say your home is a home and mm. be patriotic about it you know mm. that would really help because uh you could see that the there's a difference between when you are out there and you are around you know that sometimes that people want to see you physically they want to see you know just like recently people get tired of virtual meetings and all for yes, tech communities true. because the the connection is quite different a yeah. bit so we have to understand that part so both them of them works but i have to tell you it should be balanced. Mm. That, that, that's a, a very diplomatic answer from you. Anyway, uh, let's move on. Do you have any comments uh, mm. about the way tech is going now that uh, a lot of people, not possibly not um, uh, most of them, but a lot of people in tech now have no prior uh, computer uh, training or not computer training specifically, have no degrees in tech-related fields, say computer engineering and so on and so forth. Uh, these days, you find that people who even were in the arts can say, okay, I want to start a tech career now, and they go through the process, they learn, and, you know, finally go through, uh, for instance, like your, uh, the way your, the training you offer for some young persons, they can decide to, you know, change the path that they want to go. So what do you, what do you think about, do you have any comments on it? the fact that <laughs> uh, we're not producing, like, the universities are not producing, producing as much are going straight into tech, tech as they probably should be yeah so uh, i think um that's a very very smart question i have to say and uh, mm. it's something that people should have this understanding recently and people like let's say like you see people study chemistry study biochemistry or study a greek and doing awesomely mm. in tech you know it's just in two ways some people don't even go to school at mm. all and they do awesomely well in tech for example you have people like uh adiwale yusuf who yeah. was able to build two amazing uh startups one mm -hmm. of them is Stalin crew here recently and even recently launched a art school mm -hmm. which says that you don't have to have a degree mm -hmm. to go to school you just have to go for that diploma like a software development training and you do awesome stuff that's awesome creativity you know in contributions to the education sector you know i have to tell people it doesn't matter you know especially in a place like Lengia, yeah, whereby you can study yoruba and be working in banks so mm -hmm. so has it applies to tech to you see amazing people now not be in tech and doing hot something well. We have people like um, Hada Unduka who mm. studied, uh, I think, biochemistry and she's doing she well with she do, she called Africa mm. and, you know, doing well in tech space. So we have amazing numbers of people like that. So yeah. I think it's, there's no issue about that. You could be in field, but it still remains that if you study computer science or being high to related courses in universities, they is still good because yeah. there's still some kind of basic knowledge you yeah. have. Trust me, school yeah. is still school. Education is still education. Yeah. It still helps, basically. Yeah. But it's not a standard. It's not uh, a go-to that will make you make sure that you have to excel if you have those degree or you yeah. went through university stages. So you can just be in any field, take up courses, just like we have a lot of people in what we're doing, yeah. giving them all the facilities, partnering with GTOP and other amazing organizations. Mm. So it's actually really, really great to see amazing stuff like that. All right. Uh, now, uh, finally, what's your advice to, uh, you know, people who want to come into tech? And now I, I want you to tailor your advice you know, into maybe multiple uh, sections now. For young persons, the people you're already in contact with, those young ones you've been teaching and training and all that, and girl, the girl child, uh, what's your advice to them? And also, what's your advice to old people, perhaps like myself, who have decided that, you know, they've, they've gone, I've even, you know, people who've gone far in their career. Because I, I saw something recently. Someone said, um, like a general advice, get into tech if you, are, if you are young, get into tech. And someone replied and said, even if you are not young, get into tech. So what's your advice to those who are starting and those who want to restart? Okay, um, that's really a good one. Mm. If you're just starting, I, I would say there's there's no much advantage from people that want to start as well too, because the internet is wide and um, the informations are there, and there are amazing different organizations and tech communities mm. that 
creating platforms to help people to give provide them with knowledge resources you know those resources we lack especially in region like africa mm. and this is what we're trying to provide for people having access to free resources and trainings even to the extent of providing laptop if possible so that it can actually help you to start your career but as a young chap i tell you it's actually a good advantage for you starting a career good because you could actually have more experience you know you could add that drill that passion that young energetic thinking and everything is still there so it's great so my advice for you is just for you to be passionate don't think about money first when you're going to take oh. be passionate about it first and um, be consistent in your learning phase you own your learning make sure you hone your learning make sure you are very focused make sure you know what you want to do and have a mentor oh. have a mentor that oh. is very you can reach out to somebody mm. you can reach out to when you needed to reach out to that can guide you in the learning phases it could tell you when you face challenges it could even assist you even sometimes when you have you know, issues about gadgets and all that so mm. those are key things that are really important on your learning be consistent and be focused and have a mind on your career all right thank you very much so lastly i can really this was very insightful and uh, very uh, educating thanks for coming I'm very glad. Thank you so much for having me. No problem. All right, that's all we can take this week on Tech Weekly. Don't forget to follow us on all our social media platforms, Facebook, uh, Instagram, YouTube. You can also link up with us on www.kaftan.tv. Many thanks for watching and bye for now. I am Amadine Obewe.